Hi y'all, Cam and Korea here. Uh, thank you for coming to this edition of Stories from Across the Sea with Cam. That's me. And today's story is super cool because so normally I tell you about something that is different as compared to just America, but today we're combining three cultures. So I'm American. I've traveled across the sea to teach in Seoul, South Korea, and I'm telling you today about a food that is completely new to me from Africa specifically West Africa. So I was walking around the other day in Seoul and I stumbled upon this restaurant in Itaewon called Bethel African Restaurant or maybe it was Bethel African Restaurant or something like that. But I found this place and I've never really eaten African food before and I was like you know what let me give this a go. So I went up the narrow stairs and I found this man in the kitchen and I was a little bit like worried because it didn't look like it was open but I was like are you open and he's like yes you can sit down in the other room. So I was like, okay. So I went in and it was this room full of Nigerian men and they were all speaking in their tribal tongue about something, but I, I didn't know what it was, but they were very emphatic about it. They were very energetic. And I was like, oh, like, this is so cool. Cause like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't get to hear a whole lot of African tribal tongue around me most of the time. Like, so I was very like intrigued. I was like, this is so cool because I was intrigued by the Nigerian tribal tongue, but I was also a little bit like, oh, I don't fit here because I'm not Nigerian. And, you know, I just felt a little out of place. But the men were very welcoming and they were like, hey, brother, come here. You can sit at the table in the back. So I did. And I went ahead and I sat at the table in the back and I ordered my food. And the food I ate was called a goosey. And it's kind of like the soup it's a little bit spicy and there were three chunks of meat in it i think it was maybe beef and it was spiced so nicely you guys and on the side came a little bit of fufu and fufu if you don't know is the it's kind of like mochi from japan and if you don't know what that is either it's they're both kind of like finely ground rice po powder flour finely ground rice flour that you make into like a dough with some liquid it's a little bit like gelish a little bit pasty a little bit like a dough and you take this and you put on the side there's the agusi soup and the fo and the fufu so you have your agusi and the fufu and i didn't know how to eat it which is not something you normally think about when you're eating like you just kind of like you see the food on the plate you eat it you get it in your mouth you've eaten the food congratulations but as you know sometimes there's a a more right and a less right way to eat things yeah so I went in with my fork and I cut off some of the fufu and it was so thick I've tried it I was like okay this is all right I put it in mixed in with the agusi and I was like okay this is much better so I ate it that way and as I was eating another man came in ordered the exact same thing except he excuse me on each of the tables there were there were little soaps and the man brought him a basin of water in which he washed one hand and in the other hand, he was messaging somebody through the whole time. And once in a while, he would put up in, put up his face and like contribute to the conversation that the men around ha around him were having, that the men around him were having. Turns out, and I only know this because I think one of the men sensed that I didn't feel right about being there. So he switched from the native tribal tongue to English, and then a few of the other men started doing it too, so that I could feel included, which was really nice. Like, even if I couldn't really speak about any of the politics or the revolution that was happening in Nigeria or the revolution that they want to happen, I was still like, okay, thank you guys so much for including me. Because they didn't have to do that. They could, they could have just kept in their tribal tongue, but they didn't. They were like, you know what? Here's another brother. Here's another human. Let's just bring him into the circle a little bit more. And I really appreciated that. So, And I made a new friend as a result. Um, not because I said anything about the politics in Nigeria, because I don't know anything. I barely know about politics in my own country. So why am I going to try and talk about politics in, you know, another country? Other than the fact that they were talking about, like, revolution and, you know, a little revolution. Hello, I'm American. So sometimes a little revolution is necessary for some things to change for the positive benefit of all your people. Okay? So, but anyway, back to the Egusi and the Fufu. So, we... By we, I mean the, the guy and I who were eating had very different ways. I was doing it with a fork. He took the basin of water, washed with his clean hand. He went in, 
broke off a piece of fufu, dabbed it in the agusi, and ate it that way. And I was like, now I know how to eat African food a little better. So that's my story. I don't want this to get too long. Thank you so much for tuning in to the story from across the sea. I hope you guys have a great day. Wash your hands. God love you and bless you and keep you. And see you more soon. Love you. Bye. Ooh, my lunch is ready. <laughs>